Good evening from New York. Longtime intelligence analyst Russell Tice's allegations on this newscast that during the Bush administration, the NSA not only monitored communications of any Americans it wanted, but also collected financial and travel data about them. The charge is beginning to reverberate tonight. Our fifth story in the countdown, a man who left the Bush Justice Department over the warrantless wiretapping will now head Obama's National Security Division there. While the questions echo, what did Congress know? And what will Obama do about it? Last night, Senator Jay Rockefeller, chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, was asked whether he knew about the NSA having targeted journalists, as Mr. Tice revealed here. Senator Rockefeller raised more questions than he answered. Under the Bush administration, the NSA spied electronically on journalists. Do you know about that? I watched it on your program, and I'm quite prepared to believe it. I mean, I think they uh, went after anybody they could get, including me. Okay. And did they, they didn't eavesdrop when you did, they no, sent and, and they sent me no letters. Was Rockefeller spied on? And if not, what did he mean by they went after him? Did he or did he not know about the activity Tice alleges before he saw it on TV? A request for clarification from the senator's office today unanswered. Three years ago today, General Michael Hayden, who ran the NSA when Mr. Tice was there, was asked whether his agency spied on political opponents of the president. Hayden, too, raised more questions than he answered three years ago, if only because, as you'll see, he didn't answer at all. I ask, are you targeting us and people who politically oppose the Bush government, the Bush administration? Not a fishing net, but are you targeting specifically political opponents of the Bush administration? Because as Gore, President, uh, Vice President Gore recently said, it is much worse than people realize. Good morning, General Hayden. Katie Schrader with the Associated Press. These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> so far, the Obama White House has not answered our questions about this surveillance and whether the president will stop it. But yesterday, David Chris, who served in the Bush Department of Justice and later became a public critic of Mr. Bush's warrantless wiretapping, questioning its legality, was named by Obama to return to the Justice Department to run the National Security Division there and presumably to shape policy on whether violating the Constitution is against the law in this administration. Joining me tonight to help understand these lingering questions, Tennessee Congressman Steve Cohen, a member of the Judiciary Committee who's calling for an investigation of any Bush-era law-breaking. Thank you for your time tonight, Congressman. Glad to be with you, Keith. What's Congress going to do about this? Congress will respond. Uh, I'm on John Conyers' committee, and I'm on uh, H.R. 104, which calls for the establishment of a commission to look into war powers and, and civil liberties. This is what I think we need to have. It would be a nine-member bipartisan commission to look into all aspects of what the Bush-Cheney team has done to invade our, our civil liberties and our rights and violate our Constitution, if that be where it leads. Do you worry about uh, uh, the uh, old definition of a commission as uh, something that's created to avoid actually getting people arrested on charges for anything? Well, I don't think that's the case here. I know John Conyers and myself and other members of the Judiciary Committee like Bill Delahunt and Sheila Jackson Lee who are co-sponsors want to see answers. I think Speaker Pelosi does too and I think President Obama does and while he's voiced concerns, this is January, named for Janice. Janice looks forward but Janice also looks backwards and if you don't look back you don't know what might be hitting you on the other side. How do you p uh, penetrate the veil of national security? How do you ensure that veil is not being also used to hide uh, criminality, even in just the maintenance of the veil? It's extremely, extremely difficult to do that. But I think with the new administration, we're a lot closer than we were with the old administration. The old administration really put the veil on. and It was more than a veil. It was, it, it was a total blackout to Congress where they would not respond to subpoenas or to requests for information. The Obama uh, administration will be transparent, forthright, and I believe with this appointment that you've just uh, uh, told, told us about uh, that we're going to see that there's going to be a whole different perspective at NSA and in all areas of government. Surely, Congressman, to some degree the veil has been maintained because nobody pulled hard uh, enough on it in, in Congress. The leadership the last two years has not shown a great appetite for pursuing accountability, even when it was Congress itself that was flouted or lied to. Uh, why should anybody expect real accountability now, particularly on this issue of wiretapping? 
Well, I believe that the truth is important. I think Speaker Pelosi and Chairman Conyers are two people that are known for pursuing the truth. And I think that in the really part of the, the, the agenda in Congress the past two years with the Democrats knowing Bush was president, the important thing was to be able to have a president we could work with. That was so important. And I think now that we have a president we can work with, we can get some real answers, we can get past some legislation, and we can get to the bottom of some of these issues and not be, be uh, uh, have, have a veto or have somebody stonewall us. So I think the election and, the, and, and a new era of people wanting change that was seen in Washington and seen at the polls in November, I think you're going to see a difference. If uh, Mr. Tice is any indicator, uh, one can reveal the tip of the iceberg without actually violating national security laws or national security needs. So what happens if Senator Rockefeller, just to pick, the, to pick him as a name here, or other congressional leaders knew about this sort of uh, manifold panoply of, of eavesdropping on virtually anybody, or at least the capacity to eavesdrop on virtually anybody, is it, is it, is it likely that, that you or anybody in Congress would reveal uh, that part of this equation if it exists? Well, I don't know that uh, what we'll find out, but I think when the truth comes out that it needs to be re shared with the American public, I think the American public can, can and will uh, uh, benefit from the truth and, can, and, can, and can, can live with it. Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee, great thanks for your time tonight, sir. You're welcome, Keith.